Hey everyone, this is Christopher Luxon, the former CEO of Air New Zealand. This is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. This is Tracy Ibarra. I'm an executive solutions at Dell Technologies. This is Travis Chapel, founder of Build Your Network. If you are wanting to learn how to embrace change, to navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, my very good friend, Dennis Giannoutsos. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsos. Hey, welcome to the show, Leadership is Changing. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Leaders everywhere confront similar obstacles because people are people, but everywhere you go, leaders are overwhelmed, disrupted, and under pressure. They run from email to email, meeting to meeting. Many leaders are not changing quick enough, which means they run the risk of becoming irrelevant and being left behind. The purpose of the show is taking our listeners' leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. I believe we don't have enough effective leaders in the world today, and if we can get the leaders to step up and lead change, then they can inspire real change. Hey, listeners, it's now time to adapt in our fast-moving world, and I want to welcome you to today's Ask Dennis episode, which is a freestyle episode whereby I'm normally asked a question by our listeners, or I share uh, some of my thoughts, insights, and experiences from working with many leaders around the globe. Hey, listeners, just want to remind you about the Facebook group, Leadership is Changing. If you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that out. It's a great group, great people there, and uh, interesting discussions we're having and sharing of thoughts and insights and, of course, experiences. So change, this is uh, part of what the title of the show is around Leadership is Changing. But what about change? See, change is happening a lot, and it seems to be getting faster and faster. So How do you embrace change? What's in it for you in embracing change? See, resisting change may come naturally to us all. After all, you might be pretty happy with the way things are now. We don't like change. I remember a cartoon that I saw years ago where the question was asked in front of an audience with a speaker on stage who said, hey, who likes change? And all these hands went up in the audience. The next question that the speaker asked was, who here wants to change? And you saw the hands drop, no one wants to change. People say, why shake up what's already working, right? Well, if it ain't broken, why try to fix it? There's an interesting quote that I've seen out there, and it's it's by Rear Admiral Grace Hooper. And this is the quote. The most dangerous phrase in the language is, we've always done it this way. And as I work with different organizations around the place, I hear leaders say, oh, but we've always done it that way. Very dangerous words, in particular to what the Rear Admiral was sharing. The fact is, though that things will always change in some way, so that's always a constant, right? We know that's going to happen. The thing here is that if we don't change and we stand still, then are we going backwards? Why? Well, we are going to go backwards because if everything is, if we if we're standing still and we're not changing quick enough, there are other things around us that are moving forward. You see, life, the universe, the earth, the world, it doesn't stop and wait for us. If you're not changing, you're not moving forward, yep, you're going to get left behind. So when you understand and acknowledge everything you have gained by accepting change, you'll be more confident about embracing it. Because you see, if you can embrace it and be confident in doing so, that's going to put you in a better position than many others. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at seven areas as part of the change journey. Things that you can look at to work on, improve, or put in place that's going to help you along that whole journey. Number one, handling ambiguity. You perhaps fear the unknown, which is a fear shared by many. 
But if you can look at the oncoming change as a new adventure, you'll see the unknown item or territory in a whole new light. So if you can take it on and see it, that's great. If you think about the film Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones' approach or words were, I don't know what I'll run into around the next mountain, but it should be interesting. In other words, many films have actually got the storyline as well. That if you can look at things and take on and look at it as an adventure, an exciting, an interesting thing rather than a fear, then things will be different for you. See, if you can build your confidence by learning to adjust to or handle the unfamiliar and the unknown, you're going to be able to handle ambiguity and you're going to be able to be in a different position than everyone else and it's going to help you a lot. Number two, it's a learning opportunity. Well, embracing change will be a learning opportunity because chances are that when something in your life or business changes, your level of personal experiences and knowledge increases. So imagine if you're open to gaining some new knowledge that you can use to live an enriched and impactful life slash business. Really interesting. So if you can be open to learning and see it as a learning opportunity, put things in place, it's amazing what you can do. And I think that's where it comes back to the reflection side of things. If you can reflect based on what's actually happened around change for you, this is where you can learn a lot and give that knowledge, that experience, and help actually some of your resilience and actually be able to handle, cope, maintain a lot of change as we go through it. Number three, productivity increase. Huh, it's an interesting one. Well, they may be difficult really to imagine when a change is headed your way. It's quite likely at least in the work environment, that a change will bring more efficiency in getting work accomplished. So in other words, you've got more productivity gains. But who knows, you might be able to get twice the work done in half the time. Some changes can show negative productivity if it's not handled well. In other words, I'm not talking about whether people can handle the change well, but whether it's managed or implemented well. And if it's not done well, then there may be some negative productivity. However, if it's handled well and it's successful, then you can see massive gains in efficiency and productivity, which is a great thing. So it all makes more and makes the whole thing worthwhile. So number three was productivity increase. So just to recap, number one, handling ambiguity. Number two, learning opportunity. Number three, productivity increase. Number four are new opportunities. Some of the most wonderful things happen when change occurs even unwanted change. At the time, it doesn't feel like it's the right thing or doesn't feel like there's going to be some wonderful things happen from it. Because you see, the mind can't always grasp in advance what will happen as change unfolds. And it's not always easy to recognize the beauty of the newness and what surrounds you in that change. I, I remember there's a couple of things I want to share here. One is around this quote that I see. It's, a, it's almost like a, it's a picture two circles, and one circle says our comfort zone, and then another separate circle out to the, to the right, and in that circle says where magic happens. And so the thing here for us is that if we look at change and new opportunities and so forth, even though that we can't actually always see it or understand it or see the unfamiliar or the unknown, but if we can trust the process, there could be some new opportunities for us and, and that could be a wonderful thing for us to see. I, I remember uh, a certain person that was working in a team and they had a, they were matrixed, uh, dotted lined into me uh, and for, for some project work. And this person had been there uh, for several years and they were made redundant by their manager. And they came to me and talked about it. And this person, grown man, sat there and cried and just poured his heart out in the fact that he was really disappointed, the unknown, what's going to happen, I've got mortgage, I've got kids, I don't know what's going to happen. And as we talked it through, I turned around and said to them, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that in three months' time, within three months, you're going to have something, you and I are going to walk past the, each other in the street, and you're going to say to me, Dennis, 
I didn't believe it, but wow, look what's happened to me. It's been fantastic. Well, it wasn't even three months. It was three weeks. And I saw that person down the street and he came up and gave me a hug and he said, this and this has happened and it's just the best thing for me right now. So what we talk about is joining the dots. We don't always have the ability or we can't always join the dots yet in the moment. That it's not until later, hindsight, or when things have happened, that we can join the dots and we can actually see why certain things have happened and then what new opportunities came out of that for us indeed. And so, you know what, team, it's just really amazing what you could achieve even if you go through change, whether you want it or it's unwanted. It's really quite interesting to see what happens here because for some people, that's what is actually needed for them to move forward. Indeed. All right, number five is build your confidence. So since others will likely be unsure about the change as well, then why not let your confidence shine as the change transition approaches? So in other words, rise above the crowd. The number of times that I talk to people about uh, going into where they want to do a career change, in other words, go off to go and do a bigger business, a bigger role, or they're wanting to go off and start their own business or go out consulting, you know, buy a business, start a business, or go consulting, whatever it is for them. And then when they're in an interview, like for another role, how do they rise above the crowd? Because there could be several people in there having the interview as well, but what can they do to lift their game? And a lot of it comes down to confidence. And so if you can look forward with positivity and then recognize within yourself that you have whatever it takes to adjust to the change and get in there and answer questions by preparing for that, for that interview, you'll come across a lot stronger, more confident, and you'll be above the crowd, which is great. And as you experience more change, you'll notice that you're building confidence and you can utilize that confidence in future changes as well. And so, you know, if you all think about it as, as the listener here today or, you know, wherever you are, if you step back and think about change that you've been through in the last one year, two years, three years, can you remember what you've gone through? And how is that now putting you and giving you more confidence about going forward? For some of you, it hasn't gone well. And so the fear is there, but also there is that questioning of certain things too. So, you know, I'm not saying that all of it's perfect, but all of it does strengthen us for the future side of things as well. So you need to not only demonstrate your confidence through the change process, but also what's going to happen here is that you're going to get more self-awareness and self-assurance by going through a lot of these change and building your confidence over that period of time. Number six is motivating you. So sometimes life's path can be cluttered or a bit of a bore, but change can actually pull you through some challenging or ho-hum periods of time and motivate you to become a better worker, parent, partner, or a person. Well, let's think about it, right? I mean, the pandemic that's just happened or is happening right now, how that's just turned our world all upside down, how that's made us have to step back and think about things differently, how we've had to work from home more. We've always talked about the gig economy, and we've always talked about people working from home more, and people going, yes, it's going to happen, and others are going, oh, they weren't too sure. Well, it happened, and it showed people we could do it. Um, what's also really quite interesting is whereby when I work with a lot of execs who have been made redundant in some organizations and are coming out, so they come to me for that executive coaching and their help and understanding where they're going to go next. And so when I ask them how things have been for them in their role and what they've been doing, they tell me that in the last 12 to 18 months they've been bored in their job. And because of an unwanted change, now for some people they want the change, so they're quite happy with it, and they're moving off to go and do other things. But for some of them, it was an unwanted change, but they knew 12 months, 18 months ago that they should have moved on anyhow to a larger role, into another organization, and to go and doing their own business. But they were just too comfortable. Quite happy with what I'm doing, thanks. Quite happy getting the pay packet every month. 
taking that salary, but they weren't willing to move on. And so what happened here is that when you look at it, they were, you know, sort of bored in their in their um, in what they were doing. So they needed to move on, and they needed to be pushed to the nest to get things underway. So that was number six, motivating you. Sometimes things happen to motivate us. Number seven, catalyst for success. No matter what the change, ultimately you will rise above, and likely experience the success that change so often brings. And so, when we go through change. That could be the catalyst. That could be the thing for us to actually experience some success, to actually go ahead and do something else different in life. And then that is where we see us succeed in something else. And so for a lot of us, that's what we want to do. So I went through a tumor on my left vocal cord for two things as a result of this happened. Of course, I've been given a second chance of life because of life because it was benign, non-cancerous, and so forth. But a couple of things did happen for me. Number one. I decided to leave my job and go out and start my own business, which I've been wanting to do for years, but I put it off. And so that whole scenario got me to think about and as a, as a catalyst for me to go off and do other things, and it's been a success. The podcast, the tumor, the voice, finding your leadership voice, all of that comes from the fact that I wanted to have my voice heard more. Six months ago, Launch the podcast, the podcast you're listening to right now. Leadership is changing. And what a wonderful topic that's been, especially for this time of year. And what we're hearing and what's going on in the world today, leadership is changing. That whole discussion, that whole area needs to be investigated, looked at, and talked about. See, it's all a catalyst for success. What change are you putting off right now from doing that could help you set up for yourself, yourself for more success in whatever you're doing. Change introduces so many positive elements in your life. When you learn to embrace change along your life or business journey, you'll strengthen your efforts to live your best life. If you follow those seven different areas I talked about, number one, handling ambiguity. Number two, learning opportunity. Number three, productivity increase. Number four, new opportunities. Number five, build your confidence. Number six, motivating you. And number seven, a catalyst for success. They will all help you embrace change. That's in it for you. What's in it for you is really important. To help your life, your business journey, and will strengthen efforts to allow you to live your best life or best year ever. Totally up to you, team. If there's anything I can do to help you in helping you strengthen that and helping you embrace change and helping you move forward, if there's something you want to go ahead and do, but you're still not sure, you want clarity, you want someone to hold you accountable, you want someone to help you, you want someone to actually challenge you in your thinking, then feel free to give me a call. Contact me. My email will be in the show notes. Check out what I can do to offer and help you out. Team. Once again, check out the Facebook group, Leadership is Changing, a wonderful group of people for you to be around and for you to network and learn off each other. Hey, what we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Change is incredibly, incredibly scary, especially with the unknown and the unfamiliar territory. It's time to adapt in a fast-moving world when leadership is changing. Look out for the episodes as they've been released. Download them, have a listen, put a review, put a rating. Share them with your friends, your network, and your family. If there's any feedback you'd like to give me on the show, then feel free to send me an email. If there's any question you have for my guests as I interview them, or if you have a question for me on the Ask Dennis episodes, feel free to send me an email, dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. Team, we're almost close to the end of the year. Bring it home strong. Do what you need to do to make it happen. It's been awesome being with you today. And until next time, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world.